G'day everyone. Opening night is just one night away. We get to see how good the Bucks really are. And I think there's so much hype around this game because everyone is waiting to see how good Tom Brady and the Buccaneers are going to be. I'm not doing very well today because it is countdown to a beatdown. We got two days until my team gets annihilated. What do we have here? We have my Cowboys on opening night just on reputation alone. As you often remind me, <laughs> my team hasn't even played in an NFC championship game since the season I last wrote a Cowboy book about, which was the 1995 season. That's the last time they even made it to the NFC championship game and obviously went on to win their last Super Bowl after the 95 year. What are we now up to 20? I was in my 20s. You were in your 20s a once upon time. a time. Yeah, and it was a long time ago. <laughs> so obviously this is a reputation image game. This is an America's team game. This is truly, if you boil it all down, this is Brady versus Jerry because yeah. it's just Jerry. Right. That's who, he is the face of my team. He is the most famous or infamous owner in the history of sports to me, beyond Steinbrenner, beyond Ted Turner, beyond anybody else yeah. you can sell. But you know he'd have it no other way. Okay, he would have it no <laughs> other way. And this is hard knocks. This is yes. the, the, the culmination mm -hmm. of episode five, which airs tonight right. on HBO, of hard knocks, is it jettisons, it, it launches my Cowboys into opening night on Thursday night at the defending champs that are so good to me because they managed to bring everybody back and add a few new pieces, mm -hmm. Giovanni Bernard, right. that I, I am not going to be surprised if Tampa goes 17-0. and 0. I know it's completely against all odds, mm -hmm. but I will not be shocked if they go 17-0, and 0, and I might just pick them when we do our predictions right. to go 17-0 right. and 0 because that's how deep and good they are. Yeah, I think it's butterflies. It's kind of being anxious um, because – you, know, you kind of put a lot into it and emotionally you're at a super high point you're really focused we've had some really good days of practice it definitely feels like a regular season week you know preseason's one thing it definitely has a a preseason feel um you know when the games don't count on the scoreboard ultimately you know you're only going to play a certain amount of plays but when you know everything counts everything's um you know in the books on this one you know you want to be at your best so i've had a really good three days of prep and um you know, we just want to go out and play really well, but we got to go do it. And it's one thing to talk about it. And, um, you know, we put ourselves in a decent position to be ready to go. And uh, I feel like we're going to go out there and we'll be excited. And uh, we're playing against a really good football team with a bunch of really talented players and um, really well coached. So we're going to have to play a great game. Look, the Dallas Cowboys know what sort of challenge that Bucks QB Tom Brady presents. In fact, it was veteran linebacker Leighton Vanderesh who said, Brady studies so much film, he probably qualifies as a professor at this point. In Brady's five games against the Cowboys in his career, he's averaged 271 yards a game. He also has 10 touchdowns. Vanderesh says the key for the defense against Brady is move him off his spot. Make sure you get some pressure. Anybody more excited, it's it's probably Tom Brady. Uh. It's time to play ball. And last year, it was this incredible uphill climb to start the season. We were dealing with a COVID-riddled uh, offseason where no one was in person. And he had to learn a whole offense. And he had to take his receivers elsewhere. And then we had to learn on the fly. And they lose to the Saints, lose to the Rams, lose to the Bears. And then it clicked midseason. Imagine that team without that ramp up period and imagine it being smooth sailing, everybody coming back and facing a team that hasn't even played a preseason game yeah. as a unit yeah. together. I, I think this is going to be a one sided ball game. And I'm saying really? I'm supposed to hype this game. <laughs> the more I talk about it, I think Brady's coming and dialed in. Yep. I think yep. that Buccaneers team is ready to go. And as Sarah's talking about a full capacity Raymond James and they're coming out there and there's going to be live entertainment beforehand. This is the way a champion rolls out. Okay. And guess what? They bring everyone back, and I don't think it's just going to be Brady. Take a look at what that offensive line from Dallas, which is without Zach Martin, is going up Oof. against. Mm -hmm. Look at these names. This is the Bucks defensive front seven. And usually you get three or four guys. Look at the title of this that uh, Gina and I put together. Good luck, Good luck, Good luck Dak. Uh, also, come, welcome back, Dak. Welcome yeah. back. They come back, and they come back in waves. And Dak Prescott, without his best offensive lineman, without having played since week four of last year, without having thrown a pass in the preseason, you pick it. What do you want? Because the name, the second to last name on that second column, 
Joe Tryon Shoyinka is not a familiar name. He just dominated at training camp at preseason. He's their first round pick. I think this is a one sided ball game and it starts in the line of scrimmage. And Did you guys see how many times Brady hit the top of that goalpost? That's crazy accurate and he was doing it at speed too. No doubt he has the fastest release in the game. I don't know how the Bucks, who last year there were 10 teams that had as many or more wins than the Bucks in the regular season, and the Bucks, their big offseason move was change nothing, how they all of a sudden are Goliath. And I certainly don't know how the Cowboys, with Dak Prescott coming back and all that talent, are David. But I do know this, Coach. There is no such thing as defending Super Bowl champion. That title can't be taken from you. You don't defend it. You win it. You put it in a trophy case. And every year does not start where the previous year ended. And I do think that yeah, while Tom that. Brady knows very well how to handle the offseason success, and Gronk does too, these other guys on Tampa, up to and including one Bruce Arians, I feel like maybe still celebrating. I know Bruce Arians always gets a lot of time in the sun, but my goodness, I feel like he's been on a beach chair with a corona for 36 days in a row, given the colorization of his face lately. <laughs> like, I feel like Tampa maybe has enjoyed the Super Bowl, and I think the Cowboys could be ripe for an upset on Thursday night. So, no, I don't think it's David against Goliath. As they should. Surely Nick is just stirring the dust here. I don't think he truly believes the Cowboys will win, but he's cleverly worded it so that if by some minute chance the Cowboys do win, he can come back on Friday morning and say he called it all along. However, if the Bucks win, then he can just say, I knew the Bucks were going to win. I just said it wasn't a David versus Goliath. That's all I wanted to say. Well, Nick, I think only Jerry Jones is the one trying to build this as a David versus Goliath story. That That's Bucks right defense now. is lights loaded. out. It's loaded, it's lights out, everybody's coming back. They know how to get after the football, they know how to get after the quarterback. We saw that, uh, you know, in the Super Bowl. You know, the Tampa Bay Bucks, they are they are that. You gotta think about it, Nick. You, you Like, they have another year in this system. The defense isn't changing. You still have Todd Bowles. You brought back all coordinators, okay? So on the defensive side, they're actually gonna be better. They had those young guys in the back in the secondary, which is in, in operating a complex defense. There's so much communication between those guys, between the snaps, so they'll be better, okay? And then on the offensive side, they know who they are now. It took them until week 10 to figure out their identity. Their identity is running the football and then leaning on the pass game and situational football. That's their identity. Lean on that run. Fournette is in great shape. Uh, he's been crushing it this offseason. He's ready to go. Tom Brady. We don't need Tom Brady throwing for 300, 350 yards a, a game. We don't need that. We just need Tom Brady just to manage the game and take over in the two-minute drill. Take over when it's the first half and, you know, we're, we're going into the locker room. We need some points there. We need three. We need six. That's what Tom Brady needs to do, okay? Back in 2008, he tore his ACL in week one of the season and then had to sit and watch the rest of the year. He told me that it gave him different perspective when he was able to come back from that. He said it taught him that he'd rather play and lose a game than to not play at all. He called Prescott a really talented player and said he expects to see his best on Thursday. Also, Bruce Arians said he knows Prescott personally and said that he believes they're going to see the Dak Prescott that everyone saw pre-injury. The first game of the year to me is always the most difficult because during the offseason you go in and you try to figure out different ways that you can improve, improve and, and things that you want to change and things that you want to try. So you have no idea what's going to happen in that first game because you're practicing a bunch of things that, that you want to work on. They're, they're doing the same thing and you come out and, and you, the game unfolds. And, and in a game that just unfolds, Tom Brady has a huge advantage. The other thing with Dallas, with so many young players, young players get get really nervous and if you're trying to disguise coverages they 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 struggle with that because they just want to get to where they have to get to and that's oh, where that's a guy like tom brady whether or not they know what he's in or not he's also going to know what dallas is in because those young guys like like when nick was playing poker this weekend he was trying to bluff 
you know, the young guys are trying to bluff. They're just no good at it. I, look, I don't know if Nick was any good at his bluffing either, but they're just no good at it. And I think Nick is probably better than those young guys are. Uh, you, know, Touché, Nick. you know, I really like Nick. Most of the time he's wrong when it comes to Brady, but he's a good sport and he plays that role really well. By the way, if you're enjoying these videos, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Obviously, my team did not deserve okay. to get thrown to the wolves <laughs> on opening solo stage night at GOAT, at defending champs, at Tampa Bay. The more I think about this, the worse it gets because obviously my team has missed the playoffs the last two years. Obviously, the opening night game at least pits a playoff team against the defending champ, Thank at you. least at the very least, pits an arch rival. Let's just think about my team. As Jenny just pointed out, not only did it go only eight and eight two years ago and miss the playoffs, but it went six and 10 last year and finished third, finished third in one of the worst divisions in the history of the sport. Yes. Am I right about yes, that? Absolutely. My defense last year was historically bad, certainly for the first two thirds of the year finished just barely behind Houston for yards rushing allowed. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yep. And I think my team's going to be better this year, but I don't know that they're going to be better. So in the end, that's it for this video. I post a new Tom Brady video every day. So please like and subscribe. That way you'll always have a new Tom Brady video to watch every single day. Thanks for watching.